Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hear a Toby. There's the Toby. Hey, baby Toby. How you doing, bud? You good boy. <laughs> I hope you're good. I am great. What are you doing to your lettuce, Colby? How you doing, baby boy? You good girl. I have a few little things to do this week. Nothing big, nothing crazy. I have a spider web on my finger. That's gross. I was just outside messing around the grow room, so it must have been something I touched in there. Anyways, just, you know, we're just going to hang out. I don't, like I said, I don't really have anything planned this week. What I do know is I could really go for a cup of coffee. So I'm going to go to Starbucks. And I was thinking Lowe's, because I haven't been there in a minute. I've been seeing people posting pictures of some nice little pepperomias, and I'm like, I want to... I want one. I want to see if they have them. So let's go check it out. I haven't been to Lowe's in a minute. I kind of just want to go. I'm just going through Lowe's withdrawal. That's all. I need to get my hardware store on my pumpkin. Yeah, you're such a good girl. You're my baby butt. Been asked why I call her baby butt, and it's because sometimes I call her pumpkin butt, and then turn into baby butt. And then her name just, I took me a month to name her, and it, it pumpkin came from, I called her sweetie pie for like a month, and then it was almost October, and I was like, oh. Pumpkin, pumpkin pie. And pumpkins are cute. They're little and they round. Yeah, I picked up, pick up, I ordered some of that self wicking cord because I wanted to do that Coco Dema thing I talked about in my video where I did the Coco Demas and then I, um, I don't remember what my point was there. Oh, I was thinking about sticking it in a few of my plants, just ones that are being a little bit more fussy about staying hydrated. Just a few of them, see how it works. I have all these trays set up over here with the water in them. I'm covering some things that y'all can't see yet, some secret things, but uh, that could wick down in there. I was going to repot the Monstera today, the Thai Constellation, or t I mean in this video, but I just, the more I think about it, like... In a, about two to two and a half weeks, it will be nice enough to go ahead and head outside with this plant, and uh, that would make more sense. I can't keep it out there, but I can just pick it up and just carry it out of the bubble and repot it outdoors. It would just be so much easier. So I went ahead and I set it back up. It did some damage when it fell down, but, you know, it's just a little bit of pruning. Nothing that won't fix. You know, that's a, an Australian tree fern. It grows plenty fast. I'm not too worried about... What was... Coffee. Do I need coffee sometimes caffeine helps you focus so i'm gonna go ahead and say yes 33 that's not terrible it's supposed to get down to 17 tonight so uh, thinking those windmill palms i'll probably push them in they can take it but why put them through it when i can just scoot them right in that door they just they grow so darn slow that i uh, don't like the idea of putting them through like too much stress and torment that wouldn't be fun for them Oh, back to my home away from home. It's been a minute. Okay, I have to make this fast because the music that they're playing in here is extremely loud and totally copywritten. But look at this. Isn't this neat? I'm sure it's garbage, but we'll, we'll give it a try when things warm up and I set the hose up. Oh my gosh, this place is really packed. They're doing all the spring setup right now, so there are people everywhere setting things up. So this might be kind of short. Have you guys seen the wick and grow pots they have a little whip in them so you can just throw your plants that have the wick and grow in them right in there that's nice ten dollars i don't know they have these too which are cool but like really really cheap and plasticky but they're raised up which is again that's nice for people who don't want drainage holes and drainage dishes and things like that it's an okay concept they are definitely on board with the uh, trends. Like, you can see they've really, really done their research and made sure to mark it out to basically Instagram. Which, I, that's nice, I suppose. I'm not, like, that into a lot of the trends recently, or, like, for the last few years, but that's good that they're paying more attention than everybody is. Oh, here's some more of those uh, Wicked Grow Pots. Hey, I like this table. That looks nice. I like the colors and the cushions. I prefer all the chairs to be swivels, but yeah, no, it's nice. I've actually been toying with the idea of getting new patio furniture this year. The other stuff I have is just, it's gotten really old. It's fallen apart. It's very old. 
and I like the idea of maybe going with a rectangular table, more people can sit at it, and then just having one table instead of two. The problem is the umbrellas for rectangular tables usually are nowhere near big enough. Even, like, they make rectangular umbrellas, and they still, like, they look kind of funny, and they're not... Like, they won't actually shelter you if you're stuck outside in the rain or something like that. Oh my gosh, they have fresh plants in. It's just evergreens, nothing crazy, but it's still spring's just around the corner. I'm back in the car. It was, oh my gosh. I mean, it has to be busy, right? Because they're setting up for spring. But there was nowhere to go where I wasn't surrounded by people working and talking and the music was extra loud, which is fair. They probably want to listen to their music while they set stuff up. I get it. I've worked retail. I've had to do the resets and stuff before. It's not very much fun. Actually, I always kind of really enjoyed it, but it's still, you know, it's a lot of work. The only reason I was able to vlog what I vlogged in there was because one of the employees apparently thought he was alone and let one rip like crazy loud but i thought that that was plenty enough of an icebreaker or an excuse to be like i don't really think i need to feel uncomfortable talking to my camera in front of you well, let's see what home depot has they're right next to each other maybe they have some neat stuff i don't know uh someone gonna turn the alarm off it would appear that they actually have <laughs> decided to downsize their garden department and well this was fun well since that was such a bust i'm gonna go by a different lowe's it's probably going to be just as busy at the other lowe's as it is at the one i was just at but i figured eh, check it out anyways see what's going on there holy why are those not strapped down i don't like that at all that's making me nervous maybe there's a strap running through there where to stop light I mean, it's gonna be fine Hey, the false Aurelias look nice. It's not too bad for 15 bucks. They're a decent size. Kind of a big plant to have up here on the shelves. They must have just, the pallets must have been overstocked. Love the false Aurelias. What else do we have here? Ferns and Hoyas, some Senecio, rabbit's foot ferns. Not feeling great about having driven all the way over here, but it's okay. There's still some nice looking stuff. A little bird's nose fern. It's just, I'm getting the itch, that spring itch, and I just like wanted to be around plants and maybe see some new exciting things. It's a neat ivy. Do you have a name? No. The tag just says assorted ivy. It's variegated, waxy, ripply texture. That's pretty cool. I like that. I always like a nice waxy ivy. Lots and lots and lots of bulbs. And some nice looking dracenias over there. Those look good. And some cordelins and I mean it's your standard house plants. And more bulbs. Okay. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Go actually get some work done at home. Hey Bugkin. Hey bud, where are you going? Thought you were gonna do your stretches? No, not in the mood. What are you doing, Pumpkin? Pumpkin, what are you doing? What are you doing, baby boy? Okay, bye, Pumpkin. A little bit of Tucker. Hi, Tuck. Hey, Tuck. Hey, Tuck. How you doing, bud? He hasn't been in the videos very much because he'd been sleeping. He just turned 12. He's an old man now. He hasn't gotten to his gotcha day yet, but his 12th birthday happened. So figure while he's down here eating, we can show some Tucker and Toby time. Hey, baby Tobes. Hey, baby Tobes. Pumpkin, you still back there? Here you are. Hey, baby girl. How you doing? There's a lot of dog going on. You okay with that, Pumpkin? You okay? Where are you, are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? Yeah, you're not afraid of the dogs, are you? Yeah, you petting yourself? Mm-hmm. That's why my clearance sofa's in here. <laughs> because it's the one the dogs use, and you can see how that's going. Great love seat though. I got that thing for like, I think it was $85. Might have been 125 I got this and the table at the same time. One was 80 something, one was 125 and how did we get here? That doesn't matter. Would you like a cookie? Yeah, I know you would. Wow, it's dark in here. I know. I'm not going to throw them to you anymore because you don't catch them. The thing is, Tucker's having a really good day and he's... He's reached an age where he doesn't have those as often anymore. So. That seems like the best time to make sure Tucker makes it into the vlogs. 
Right? Yeah, good boy, good boy. Okay, one more. I mean, you're not supposed to even be having any of these. How it is, they get old, you kinda gotta spoil them. Good boy. Guess what I'm up to now? Yeah, doing some drilling. I just came out here and I was messing with some of my pots and remembered that I had several that I needed to get some holes in the bottom of. And typically I end up kind of waiting until it's nicer outside. And that's just because it's a lot easier to do this when you have a hose and you can see it's really messy down here. I mean, look at that. See all that? It does make a big mess. So it's not something I usually do indoors, but yeah, I got this oil pan for a buck from the dollars for last week. And I realized like this is kind of the perfect shape for this, at least for smaller pottery. So I already started working on some of them. These pretty multi-chrome pots, the middle of them, you can kind of see in there, maybe. Yeah, you see there at the center, right there where my finger is, it's raised up. So after I drilled the first hole, I realized that's not going to work because the water is going to settle around the sides in here. So I had to drill holes on each side, but that's okay. That's just extra drainage. So one of the reasons I leave the tags on some of my pots sometimes is really it's only with pots that don't have a hole in the bottom because sometimes it helps provide just a little bit of traction when you start to drill i don't know if you've ever drilled your own pottery uh i guess we can talk about it real quick since we're here and we're doing it you need is a diamond tip drill bit and then uh, something to put your pot in and then uh, something to squirt some water with you don't want this bit you don't want to use that on a dry surface it'll wear it out very 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 quickly and these are kind of pricey these diamond bits they usually range in price from like $18 and up. I think this one right here was $29 or $39. Uh, I've had it for a couple of years, so I can't really remember how much it was, but like, it's kind of crazy. It's not something you want to have to replace all the time, right? When I'm drilling a pot, I go and make sure the top is nice and wet to get things started. And then I like to start off at an angle. I like to make sure that it's at an angle because it kind of puts a little bit of a divot in there first that helps you get a better grip when you start to straighten out the drill bit. Just apply nice, even, light pressure the entire time. That way when it's done, it doesn't, you know, jam itself through the bottom of the pot. And that's it. Sometimes it helps to kind of go a little bit heavier and then lighter, a little bit heavier than lighter some tilts here and there. Ultimately, I just try to be gentle and take my time with it because the, like I said, you apply too much pressure, one that wears the bit out a lot faster. And then if you go way, way, way too fast, then out of nowhere, when it's done, that your entire drill, your driver is just gonna go right through the bottom of your pot and break it. And you know, that would be a big waste of time, right? Don't need to do that. That's it, it's easy. Not always perfectly centered, but that doesn't matter. Okay, next thing on my list, the <laughs> basil basil. Always something going on with this basil. It's just, it's growing like a champ. So uh, it has been, I don't want to say high maintenance, but it's required a good amount of water and, um, well, pruning, but mostly just with the flowers. Those lights I have on my shelves where I've been keeping these, they really, man, they're really good for flowering. That's for sure. Cause what was it like? one or two vlogs ago that I went ahead and I pinched these and I pulled those flowers off the tops. Now I already need to do that again. And in fact, you know, why don't I, I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and give this like an actual nice size prune, give the soil a top dressing because this one, this plant in particular is one where I have really been struggling with keeping it hydrated. And it's not that it needs to be bumped up into a new pot. That's not the case. One of the reasons I put these, this and my poblano into a clear pot was so that during the growing season, not the growing season, this winter season, we'd be able to, um, tripod, no, no, get back up there, what you doing? So that we'd be able to kind of get a look at these and see what's going on down there beneath the soil. And uh, can look right in there and say, hey, that's not root bound. It's not there yet. So I don't need to repot this. But I did pot this and the poblano up into a, a pretty light and airy mix. I tend to prefer to go uh, on the drier side with my mixes, especially if it's plants that are coming inside for the winter time, just because it's, it is so much easier to rehydrate a plant than to bring one back from being overwatered. I would rather have a plant that requires lots and lots of frequent watering over one where you water it once and then like two weeks later it just starts to wither and die because it's drowning. It doesn't work for me. I don't like that. So that's just 
my growing style. It's how I've learned what works for me. With this basil, though, I was going to prune those flowers off. I'm thinking that it, it would actually probably be a good idea to give this a pretty heavy chop and get this to bush out more from down below and hopefully encourage some root growth. And I'm not going for any type of like crazy specific cuttings here. I'm just going to level the entire thing off. Yeah, I know, might seem dramatic, but remember, this is something that we grow so that we can harvest it and eat it. So I will be able to do that, which I am excited about. We'll make some pasta sauce or some pizza or something like that. Who knows, there's, there's, this has been bothering me. And my snipper's out, might as well get that. Oh, okay, went, oh, lost one, I didn't mean to, that's okay. And now there's less foliage for those roots to have to support as well. So, but ultimately the idea here is I want it to bush back out. I want more growth coming up from the sides. You can see it sent this one up down here and I would like for it to do more of that as opposed to climbing up higher and higher and higher. I've already dropped those clippings straight into a thing of water so that they don't dehydrate too fast. I was thinking that I might take some little bits off of this and just stick them down into the soil. Although I did just say that the soil dries out kind of fast. That might not be the best thing for propagation, but I think, I don't know. This, it's so easy to take cuttings from this and propagate it. Okay, well, I had a little starter tray out and everything, and I was gonna go ahead and get these guys propagated. I was gonna make some little cuttings. You can see I already put one down in here, but uh, I am. Um, I'm out of rooting hormone, which you don't have to have for propagation and rooting, but it really does make a difference in the success rate. I could have sworn I had some clone gel, but I was just looking and no clone gel. I must have used it all up. That's fine. I'll eat it. No big deal. Love the basil. Like I said, since this soil mix dries out so quickly, it doesn't seem like the most opportune place to just stick a cutting. I'll just leave that in there. We'll see what happens just for fun. And we can talk about propagating another time when I have some of uh, all my supplies and it's more appropriate. This basil, still talking about the basil. And the same thing goes for the poblano, but the poblano is over on the shelf, my pepper. And I, I honestly just don't feel like going and getting it right now. I have talked numerous times about how these have been a pain to keep hydrated. I just said it like what, a minute or two ago. I don't want to repot them. I don't want to mess with their roots. They're already going and doing their thing. And in, you know, what six weeks probably i'll be able to take these back outside so i just i don't want to mess with them too much but what i was thinking though got that water wicking cord in the mail from amazon and why not just stick some of that in there it's not going to make a gigantic difference in how well the plant stays hydrated i don't think but the thing is this this basil like look at how thirsty it is and this was watered heavily very heavily just yesterday and she's already thirsty again i'm thinking uh, what i'm going to do here is this is an experiment by the way i do have a separate video that i've already started working on that'll be out about just some things about self-watering pots and moisture meters and all that fun stuff but i don't really think this is the place to do that i kind of want to kick this off for sort of the experimentation phase with you know just like cheap wicking cord and I need some sharper scissors but they're pretty that's the problem I never go buy new scissors because the ones I have are so pretty what I figure I'll do here oh what am I hi there we go is just kind of get that cord pulled really tight onto the top of this chopstick here and then just go ahead and jam it in the bottom I wish there was a hole in the center see that that wasn't in frame there's not so I'm going to come in here through the side and I'll go in at a slight angle just to make sure like enough surface area is covered and then pull that out. Perfect. Well, that was incredibly easy. So I don't think these two little cords here are going to make a gigantic difference in uh, watering this plant, but what I'm thinking is that it may at least reduce the frequency because ideally with our plants, you want to water them before they start to look wilty and sad, right? It, sometimes it's just, what happens and it's the indicator and it can take a while to kind of learn the pattern and the rhythm of the plant there's so many factors with the soil and that's a whole whole long thing one of the hardest questions to answer for people is always how often do i water my plant and i think i don't 
I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know your life. <laughs> I don't know what you have it potted in. I don't know uh, your soil. I don't know the location. I don't know your atmospheric pressure, your dew points, and humidity, and all of those things. Like all of those things are factors. Altitude. I mean, there's there's a lot that can influence how often you need to water a plant. That's why you know generally anybody who does these videos or blogs or anything like that, we say. Water when the top like one to inch and a half dries out, as opposed to saying uh, you know once a week and stuff like that. There's sometimes sometimes I see articles and things online that have been telling people like the exact measurement of water to give to the plants. I think that that really gives a uh, a false sense of security to people who are new to gardening and. Uh, because most people, I say new to gardening, because most people who've been doing gardening for a while, you, we know that there's not an exact measurement how much water to give to a plant. Like, pretty much ever. You water until the water comes out the bottom of the pot. And I repeat that. I do three flushes. Water on the top, comes out the bottom. Water on the top, comes out the bottom. Water on the top, comes out the bottom. Three times. Easy. That way, you know that the soil's been fully moistened and has had contact with the water, and it encourages deeper root growth. So, it's I don't understand this thing I've been seeing it's really it's kind of bothersome and I you know I'm gonna stop because I could go on with this for a long time and it would make more sense to talk about that when I go into a video about self-watering planters and moisture meters and those things but anyways I think that this is more of just kind of like a little backup security thing as opposed to like a this is going to now make my plant maintenance free that's not that's not what's going to happen here at least I don't think it is. I'd be very surprised. It doesn't seem likely though. So there's that. The basil, I'll just keep it in water for a little while and try and pick up some rooting hormone or something in the next few days. That's one of the nice things about basil is you can keep it in nice clean water for several days as long as it's out of direct light and out of intense heat or intense cold. It'll stay feeling and smelling and tasting pretty fresh. Well, I don't know how it feels. I would imagine, hopefully it feels okay, even though it's just been severed from its body. You get what I'm saying. Well, get back to the basil thing at another time. Hydro store is kind of out of the way, and that's where I like to get my rooting hormone from. There's a new nursery, or, well, more new to me. I've known of them, but I didn't know that they... It's like one of those nurseries where they have lots of locations, and they have one that's open during the winter, which I didn't know. Someone told me about it on Instagram when I made a post about this variegated, uh, some sort of fan palm at the botanicals here. It was like, is it a Livestona? Is it a Likuala? I don't know. And then the whole thing turned into me talking about how I've always wanted a Likuala, but I'll never find one for an affordable price. Anyway, someone hit me up and said, hey, so-and-so has them. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go check that place out. I mean, not necessarily going to get a Likuala, because I would imagine for the price they told me about like they're probably teeny tiny little things the Likuala's they tend to be pretty pricey particularly the grandest because it's just it's so pretty really all of them they're slow growers we can talk about that another time though uh, but I thought hey let's just go check it out so let's go do that right now let's go check it out uh new nursery who did I mean it just looks like a building from here but there's a nursery here 20 okay almost 30 miles away from home Oh my god, you guys, I am so happy right now that I actually have, like, tingly butterfly feelings in my stomach. I have found just an absolute heaven. What? Where am I? I mean, they have Likuwalas and some little Chefleras and some... Oh, I'm so happy right now. And even they got all the little teeny tiny some little things for terrariums sansevierias and flower don't see that around here very often oh, oh oh look at all the little things for terrariums i gotta take it easy i can't spend this entire time here just walking up to plants and moaning i know that that's really not going to work well for a lot of people you won't like that monstera how you doing like the house plants that they have just look fantastic they're in great shape everything is so healthy and happy and it smells great in here look at the little baby added nitty bombs they're adorable oh ho, ho. Ooh, you're pretty definitely going to be needing one of these shut up it's fine oh my gosh these plants are just everything is so Stunning. Bismarckias, that might be a red latin, but 
similar. Just so much variety. And everything looks good too. Look at it. Isn't this stuff cute? They even have all these little bromeliad displays. Those are fun. This one has some crazy foliage. Gorgeous. I'm having multiple plantgasms today. Oh, look at this. I even like how they have things displayed with that nice chartreuse foliage down here from the Dracania, the limelight with the Kentia palm behind it, then the philodendrons and the contrast with the fiddle leaf fig, and then down here with the aglonemia. Everything is very well thought out. I'm impressed. It's just a scan of things. I couldn't possibly walk through and show everything. And I'm shy about vlogging in public too, so. But I've already been caught, so it's fine. Great big healthy syngoniums. Gorgeous ficus, some adsoni, monsteras. Their palm selection is really good too. They have these uh, bottle or spindle. I think these are spindle palms or a combination of both. The orange is usually spindle, but they all, like, they look nice. And like I said, the prices are pretty dang good, too. Ooh. Oh, you're a pretty one. I do not need any more crotons. I mean, not right now. Give it a month, and I'm sure two months. Two months, actually. And I'll probably be picking some more up, but I don't need them. They just, they fit into the landscaping so well during the summer. Yeah, there's a little bottle palm, so you can kind of see the difference there. There's another one back there on the table. Their fronds tend to curve out when they're a little bit smaller, usually slightly less orange. I don't, I'm sure there's a better way to describe it. After a while, you just kind of start to recognize them. I don't know. That's not, not the most educational way to do it, but see, bottle palm. See how the penne doesn't come all the way down there, whereas the spindle palms, it's more down towards the crown and I mean just orange did I mention that I was just in there to find a $20 plant for a plant tag that Pam's Plenty Things put me in well it's okay reimburse me we'll be fine that'd be funny just go out and spend all my money on plants and then say reimburse me there's a <sighs> um was that as good for you as it was for me oh my gosh that place I was just, I was in plant heaven. It was so nice in there. I, um, I picked up a few things. This one, a little bit heavy on one side. I don't know what variety of bromelia this is. It's some sort of near Regelia. I said, I'm just going to let this one kind of hang out right there because I think that it would be happier not just constantly falling over as I'm trying to film it. It's some sort of near Regelia. It has the spread of some sort of fireball hybrid. I'd, I don't know. It's hard to say when uh, one, it's wintertime and then they're in a greenhouse because the light really affects their pattern and coloration. So I'd kind of hesitant to go online and try and identify it but it's pretty and uh, it was very affordable that nursery the people there were just so incredibly friendly and uh, diligent they packaged all of the plants up in paper which i'm not used to well i just don't live someplace where i usually think it's cold enough to that because it was like 49 degrees which for something that's flowering that's you know that can be a shock but just from like the door to the car for most plants that's okay but, I mean, that's good. It shows that they take pride in their plants and they want to protect them. But some of the plants that, uh, were kind of big. This one, no big deal. Really pretty bromeliad. I think that this will look nice, possibly, like, mounted up onto a piece of driftwood or something like that with some other moss and tillandsias and things. It just, it has that nice jungle vibe. And just look at how well it's suckering and spreading and putting out the pups. I'm really happy with this one. It was a really good price, too. It, this, it's, this, <laughs> some of these are really big and gonna be very hard to get on camera here. I don't have a lot of room to work with out here. Look at, I mean, I know you'll just saw it, but it's just, oh, it's so pretty. Like I said, it reminds me of the Del Mar or the Blue Tango, which have these really nice purple and pink flowers on them, or bracts, we should call them the flowers, or the tiny little pieces that emerge from those bracts. I always make sure if I'm getting a bromeliad, particularly one that has these big bracts like this, to try my best to uh, find one where the flowers are still down low, because that means it still has all this potential left on the flower. They were all about at the same place 
in the nursery, all the ones they had. This, like, most of them were pretty close to being to the top of the bracts, pretty much close to being done flowering. This one was the only one where it still had, like, several left to go, like, maybe, I don't know, five or six on some of them. Figured this one's probably the best one to get just because it, like I said, it's going to have more time flowering. Once the flowers reach the tip up there, then they start to dry out and fall out. And uh, different bromeliads, the flowers can still last a really long time. The bracts can last a really long time, even when they're done flowering. Just kind of varies from plant to plant. Oh, and this one is Acmea America. That's the variety on this one. They did have a unbelievably gigantic, it was either a Del Mar or a Blue Tango in there. It was not that much more than this one, but I just, I have some Del Mars and Blue Tangos and I thought, well, why not mix things up? and get something that's variegated so that even when it's done flowering it'll still look pretty now they're monocarpic once this flower dies off eventually the mother plant here in the center will start to fade but that's okay because look it has an offshoot there's multiple plants in here so uh, you know within i would say i mean probably this time next year i would imagine that pup over there that offshoot will start to bloom so that's not a big deal this will just keep growing and keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and sometimes the central plants and the bromeliads will hold on for a very very long time they don't always just like rot out and die like you would have with like a sempervivum which is a, a hen and chicks you know the hens and chicks i do tend to be kind of picky with variegation i tend to prefer things that are variegated more towards the white and creamy sides of things this one is fairly yellow but it also still has some of the white in there and it's fairly subtle it's not like bright crazy yellow the foliage on its own does like from a distance at first glance just kind of remind me of you know like your standard corn plant but you know a jersenia but it's different especially because on the undersides of the leaves it has this neat pattern that nice glow that's going to come through there i will be keeping this someplace where it's only going to be getting filtered light because i would imagine this would probably scorch fairly easily depending on the time of year especially with it being variegated that's going to make it even more delicate but i just oh she's so pretty chances are come summertime when it's time to move this plant outside that that bract that bloom right there will be pretty spent and done but the foliage is still really nice to look at so it's okay but could oh my goodness guys i just realized i've had that fan on this entire time i hope that that wasn't bothered turn off what's wrong with you I am so sorry. The audio is probably all kinds of messed up because of that. What? What? What do you think's here? What happened? Oh, what did I do? I'm okay with it. Likuala grandis, a Likuala palm. This is a plant that I think uh, de definitely deserves its own video, its own spotlight. Partially because I, I really, I gotta do some work with the lighting here for this plant. Look at how cool that foliage is. Can you see why I've always wanted one of these? Now, this is a plant that will end up getting its own uh, spotlight. So I'm not going to go like too much into detail on it. I already talked about the Likuwalas and how they can be kind of pricey. But that's because they're slow growers. Not the easiest to care for either. Look at the foliage, isn't it? gorgeous especially considering it's been indoors in a greenhouse and yes the foliage stays like this it's not like those are immature leaves no no they always have that fun cylindrical shape to them there's a little bit of discoloration in there but these tend to have some modeling and some veining within their fronds so i'm not really concerned about that and they have very nice spiky insides look at that it's still it's pretty though isn't it they're just they're such an interesting type of palm tree they look fantastic when they're planted up in like a nice decorative pot and some place in the like dappled light they don't like full sun what am i doing this isn't a care video it's just pretty isn't it beautiful it's a plant where when i can do a spotlight on it i'd like to like actually be able to get it into frame i'm like all the way back against the wall i can't get any further away and this is the widest lens that i have so i want to be sure to be able to show it in all of its glory <laughs> this is one of my dream plants wanted one since i was a little kid it's actually probably one of the first palm trees where i was ever like oh i want one of those there's a whole story behind it i'll save that for another time though when i like spotlight this plant because it's really it's bugging me the lighting's bothering me that you can't see how pretty it is like i said this is the best i can do as far as getting it into frame where everybody can see it and 
whatnot, and I mean, you still can't even. It's not in frame, so that's not, that's not, I don't like that. Maybe, you know, I bet when I repot the Monstera over here, that'll give me a little bit more wiggle room to kind of move some things around and then we'll be able to get a better look at the plant. It should do just fine in here. The lighting, humidity, and temperature should be just fine for it. They don't need bright, intense light, but they do like things to be warmer and on the more humid side. And uh, I think that that shouldn't be an issue. The winter airs can be very dry, but there's not that much winter left, so I'm not that worried about it. And then, you know, there's this pond back here that helps humidify things, and I have humidifiers, and I have misters, which I have to be certain aren't actually going to hit this plant. I don't want water to settle down there in that crown because it could rot out. It's just... Oh, so pretty. This for me is not just a wish list plant. This is a dream list plant. The only thing that would make it better would be if it were variegated. And I really, I don't care that it's not. They have a really great formal structure to them. I guess you just have to take my word for it since we're, we have to film it from down below and I'm up against a wall right now. I can't get any further away. I guess with that in mind, there's no reason to go on about it for too long because like I said, I'd like to talk about it when I can show it off in all of its glory and not just when I'm pressed up against a wall. And I also got a windmill palm. It's a pretty good size and the price for it, I thought was very reasonable because it's windmill palms, again, are a really slow growing type of palm tree and uh, because of that, they tend to cost a lot. So this is, had a decent amount of size on it was $69, so uh, that'll be a nice addition to the palms that I can keep outside for the majority of the winter time. Uh, I did, did too many things happened in this vlog and didn't happen at the same time because it's just it gets so hard to title a video where it's like 20 different things go on, you know, with the went to Lowe's and then uh, drilled holes in pots and then cut back a basil and then did self-watering cord and then went out and got one of my dream plants. I try to not do that as much as I used to, but sometimes it just happens and it's worth it because, I mean, look it. Look it. It's just so pretty. When it's not in focus, it's beautiful and worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it all up here before I just start to really make this even worse than it already is. You know, it's a vlog. It's how things go. It's, you know, day-to-day -day life and what's been going on. I'm sure whoever's out there watching, I doubt you're doing the exact same thing every day, right? That would be kind of boring. Yeah, anyways, I got all my social media linked down below. I use Instagram way more than anything else. A little Stromanthi poking through back there. It's looking nice. And don't forget to like the video. It makes a big difference for the channel, and I appreciate it. And subscribe as well. And hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. And comment down below. I love talking to y'all. Say hi. Does anybody y'all have experience with the Likuawas? Especially those of you down in Florida. Like, I mean, I guess you have to be like way down in Florida to keep these outside year round. But still, they're so pretty. Let me know. What do you know about them? Or just some other fun plants you've been stumbling upon. Or some of your wish list plants and whatnot. Experiences with self-watering. Oh, the, it's not over here anymore. <laughs> I had a self-watering thing over here. Experiences with some self-watering pots, cords, and those sorts of things. Let me know. Fun recipes that you like to do with your basil. Doesn't matter. Let's just talk and have a good time. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Can't. Nope. Gotta get off the tripod here. Forgot about the poblano update. Didn't, I don't think we did. I don't think we talked about the poblanos yet. So over here is where I put the basil and the poblano. You can s I put two cords in the poblano and I decided that that seemed unnecessary. So I just ran, well, two, so there's two and two. It's one, qu you get it. So I did one set of them down into the water and then the same with this one. So they just kind of, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but they dangle down in there. They'll wick the water back up. And, I don't know, we'll see what happens with them. The uh, poblano, looking good. Look at all those flowers. I think that those were there last week i'm pretty sure in the vlog some of them are starting to fall off and get ready to turn into actual little fruit and then the peppers themselves are i mean i don't can i pick them yet no those are still really firm poblanos get really big but when they're indoors and it's their first set of peppers i don't know how big they need to get to come off the plant because even if they're not gigantic like you don't only get poblanos just so you can stuff them sometimes they're good to cut up and put in salads and whatnot anyways that's the plant it does have lots and lots of flower buds on it and more peppers that are going to be showing up here this would have been a good plant to also do a cut back on but since it has all the 
flowers on it. I thought I'd just go ahead and leave it. It seems happy, so I'm not I'm not gonna mess with it. It's fine how it is. I just got like a piece of dust or something in my contact lens and it feels like my eye is on fire. I gotta go. I gotta go take that lens out and like wash my eye out. It burns. So I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Why well, I said that like it's a question. I do hope everything's going beautifully for you. Uh, and as always, and most importantly everybody, Keep on growing. Bye bye.